What's going on guys? I'm Tyler, and I'm here to let you know that Bullet Train is no perfect movie. And Bullet Train stars Brad Pitt as your typical assassin who wants out of the game but has a target on his back everywhere he goes. And in this case, on a mission to Tokyo, he's tasked with stealing this Pulp Fiction-esque briefcase from a bullet train where, of course, various other hitmen played by Brian Tyree Henry, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Joey King, Bad Bunny, amongst others, are after this briefcase. But much to, much to Pitt's surprise, He's interacted with a majority of these assassins on previous missions, and not in a good way. So, when I saw the trailer for this, I figured that it was going to be light on story, heavy on mindless action, but out of all the filmmakers working today who are really good at making dumb popcorn flicks, director David Leach and producer Antoine Fuqua, in my opinion, are among the best. So I was hoping that this was going to be an enjoyable two-hour waste of my time. At the end of the day, it was just a two-hour waste of time. I can't say I was mad watching this, but unfortunately, Bullet Train is an absolute mess in just about every aspect, writing-wise, performance-wise, and worst of all, and most surprisingly, in creating solid action sequences, which is weird. David Leach is one of the original directors of the first John Wick, and he's since gone on to direct other stuff like Atomic Blonde, Deadpool 2, Hobbs and Shaw, and I enjoy those movies without question, but the more I have rewatched his solo films, with Atomic Blonde being an exception, a part of me is kind of wondering whether he forgot what made John Wick such a breakout franchise and stand out amongst other action series like Marvel or DC. The main difference being, you hold the fucking camera still. You shoot the fight choreography in steady wide shots to show how beautiful, elaborate, and fluid and acrobatic the choreography is. To show the fact that the actors are the ones doing their own stunts, that they took the time to learn martial arts and stunt training. You hold on certain shots for longer periods of time to really sell all of these main features, and only cut to a close-up to show the impact of a punch or a stab. There are three major problems that I had with the action in this movie. For one... Even though there technically isn't any shaky cam per se, until the finale where I could not tell whatsoever who was getting shot, stabbed, or where. But there's still a lot of handheld camera work that is incredibly distracting to the point where I wonder if the cameraman even knew where he was supposed to be focusing in on the actors. Because there are so many times where the shot starts off steady and you could tell who's punching where, but then as the camera moves... It gets a little more distracting and unfocused, and every time someone punches another opponent or makes contact with them, sometimes they change the camera angle upon impact, and it takes away heavily from the action, because while you technically know what's going on, because you technically didn't see the impact, you don't feel the emotional weight of it. You don't feel what the other characters are going through. And the sad thing is... There really isn't that much inventive choreography to begin with. A lot of it is just characters grappling guns off of one another or throwing a random object into their faces as distraction and then tackling them. And I'm sure the excuse is going to be that they're on a boxed-in bullet train where there isn't really that many... There isn't really that much room to breathe or move in. There are going to be a lot more witnesses because they're boxed in and there aren't that many weapons to improvise with. But... That's no excuse. Take a look at John Wick Chapter 2, where Keanu Reeves fights Common on a subway, where they pull knives, where they flip each other and throw them to the ground, or in Nobody, where they technically do the same thing and use a lot of improvised weapons like beer bottles to smash in someone's face, the wiring that uh, signals you to stop the bus that's used to strangle someone, or ripping a bar off the bus in order to punch someone straight in the throat. The fact that this is a more claustrophobic setting is no excuse to limit the choreography, which is an absolute shame. You can tell that the actors are the ones doing their own stunts, and when a fight is shown in a wide shot, it is a lot of fun, and I was gripping my fists in anticipation, particularly two fights. One involving Brad Pitt and Brian Tyree Henry in the quiet section, where yes, they are literally boxed in and actually have an excuse not to do that much choreography. They have to fight in one booth so that they don't draw any attention, or this really funny montage that I wish there were more of throughout the movie where uh, Henry and Johnston reminisce about a massacre they committed, and they're looking at the camera as they're counting down the amount of people that they have brutally killed, and I do mean brutal. The problem is, that was the one scene that really felt all that brutal, because number two, 
while this is technically an R-rated movie, there are blood and guts. It's one of those R-rated movies that thinks that showing a head being blown off or a neck stab for a split second and then cutting away to another character reacting to the sound effects or reacting off screen to the blood is what's supposed to make it brutal, gruesome, and funny. When in reality, it would have been gruesome, brutal, and funny if we actually saw the violence play out in a silly, exaggerated, over-the-top fashion. Take, for example, Burn After Reading. Would George Clooney shooting Brad Pitt point-blank in the head be all that funny if A, he wasn't actually shot point-blank in the face, and you didn't see his brains being blown out as he was smiling? No, that actually made it fucking hilarious. This is supposed to be a dark comedy where the violence is so over the top and morbid that it's actually kind of hilarious. And this is the guy who directed Deadpool 2, the one that I prefer over the first because I found it darker and funnier. So he should technically already know these things by now. And number three, there really isn't that much action throughout the film. I think the finale is the only fight to go past the five minute mark because every other fight scene, because of the limit, limited choreography and limited environment, it only lasts for what feels like two minutes. And the fights seem to be spread out amongst every 20 minutes and not in a good way because the majority of these scenes throughout the film are just characters giving copious amounts of exposition on who they are as people, what their motivations are, what makes the villain so intimidating and why this briefcase is so important as opposed to, again, John Wick or even Nobody where the world building and the character development and the overall style of the film was shown, not told, in considerably more subtle detail and had an actual simple, straightforward story and a central character that was the focus of the film. Bullet Train, in a weird way, has this Tyler Perry problem where... It starts off having a main character, but then there will be 10 to 15 minute gaps where all of a sudden the main character completely disappears and it turns into an ensemble piece. And as a result, there are so many characters that get underutilized and characters that get way too much screen time. You have Bad Bunny in his feature film debut, a completely unrecognizable Logan Lerman who, honest to God, would have been a really good performance as this love-to-hate scumbag and it would have been a nice change of pace for him, and especially Zazzy Beats coming off of Deadpool 2 with David Leach, they are all criminally wasted in this movie to the point where they really only have one or two scenes tops, and those scenes you have already seen in the trailer, so there's absolutely no element of surprise to it. Meanwhile, there is way, way too much of Joey King just sitting around talking in a slimy, sinister fashion without really doing anything intimidating. I did not buy into her performance whatsoever, I didn't think that she served as a formidable opponent to any of these characters because you probably see this coming. It's going to sound harsh, but it's true. These guys could all take her down in a split second if she didn't have other people working for her. And look, that's not to say she can't take them down because she's a woman. It's because she's a woman who isn't tall or strong compared to the other characters. As I said before, Zazie Beetz is in this movie and she has shown herself to be a capable action hero. Karen Fukuhara from The Boys is in this movie, and I thought that she was going to be an assassin in disguise, but unfortunately, that's just another missed opportunity from this script. I get that Joey King's strength is supposed to be how good she is at emotionally manipulating people into doing her bidding, and the fact that she does have a certain amount of power that does tie into her backstory, but her character was so thinly written, her motivation was utterly stupid to the point where I just sat back rolled my eyes and went, are you fucking kidding me? We have seen this motivation a thousand times the past few years. There's nothing new or fresh about it. And I won't spoil what it is, even though, based on what I've said about her character, I'm willing to bet you can already guess. I just couldn't get invested into it whatsoever. And it was honestly hard to get invested into the script to begin with, because... The writer thinks he's a lot more clever than he is by throwing in so many convoluted twists and turns that are either foreshadowed so bluntly and in such an obvious fashion that you can predict the final outcome a half hour away. Like when Aaron Taylor Johnson looks at Brian Tyree Henry and goes, Are you wearing a bulletproof vest? No, why would I do that? Everybody shoots from my head. Yeah, but people also shoot for the chest too. What do you think the final outcome is going to be, really? 
there are obvious foreshadowing moments like that, or there are going to be these huge coincidences where the smallest mistakes characters make serve as a major butterfly effect towards the plot. And it is intentional. I understand that the script is going for a Coen Brothers kind of vibe where the main theme of this movie is how fate is inevitable towards everyone, no matter how much free will you have or how much you try to avoid the worst events in your life. But the movie doesn't really take the time to explain how fate works philosophically, or at least based on how Hiroyuki Sonata, who also isn't in this movie enough to be as cool as he is, since he's the one who drives the philosophical lessons of the movie. You don't really spend that much time listening to the other characters about what they think about fate, if they even believe in it to begin with. Because there are characters who definitely do, but the characters themselves are so simplistic that they don't really have personalities. They just have one basic motivation, like Joey King, or they have this one random topic or quirk that they obsess over to the point where they repeat it over and over again, kind of as a running gag for the source of comedy. In Brad's in Brad Pitt's case, his overall shtick is that in order to try to avoid fighting, in order to be the better person that his therapist wants him to, he completely fails over and over again to recite his therapist's motivational quotes, and everyone just stares at him going, fuck are you talking about, mate? Which does sound funny on paper, but that routine that I just described gets repeated over and over and over again, and it gets old after a while. Same with Brian Tyree Henry. His... Defining feature, I'm not even kidding, is that he believes wholeheartedly in the moral lessons of Thomas the Tank Engine the way that I do with DuckTales, which... I mean, I got no problem with that, it's just the jokes weren't all that funny, but I will say this, Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson were easily the main highlight of the movie. They had terrific chemistry with one another. Their relationship was a lot stronger than just the bickering duo where one is more hot-headed and in control and the other one is passive but technically smarter. And their timing and delivering as they're arguing with each other was so fast-paced that even though the jokes were not landing in terms of writing, the performances and the commitment to the material actually elevated it and I was constantly smiling every time they were on screen. Tyree Henry especially just absolutely owns this role. And Brad Pitt is also playing a character reminiscent of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, so he's already really good at portraying the slapstick element of reacting to getting his own ass kicked or dropping important shit at the worst possible time without it ever feeling forced. But you also believe that he genuinely wants to be a better person and that he's literally the only assassin in this movie that doesn't carry or use a gun. I think The Raid 2 was the last time I saw an action hero that didn't use a gun. Not counting Batman, because he's a hero hero. I mean like heroes who aren't willing to get their hands dirty. It's been years since I've seen something like that. And again, it would have been a huge opportunity to expand upon that. But that's really all Bullet Train is. It's a bunch of missed opportunities in regards to action, in regards to a cinematic style. The performances are good, and they try to elevate the material as often as they can, but more often than not, the script just doesn't give them that many opportunities to be funny, to be brutal, or even really that dark. It's not as bad as I'm making it out to be through, the, through my own tone, but I was just expecting so much more from the guy who gave us John Wick, Atomic Blonde, and Deadpool 2, other than some cool Japanese covers of Staying Alive or Holding Out for a Hero. Those better be on Spotify pretty soon, but because of what a mess it is, I'm going to give Bullet Train a 2 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. If you have seen Bullet Train already and you disagree, let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. Be sure to stay tuned for more reviews. And be sure to like and subscribe. Take care.